I wonder if I can talk to you alone for a moment, Mrs. Soprano? On the basis of the Sanford Binet, he's high IQ. You can't prove it by me. He's got a D-plus average. Well, he doesn't apply himself, but he is smart. The results tell us. He's a leader. Hi. David, how are you doing today? Okay. Happy to hear it. Congratulations on the movie. Uh, I'm sure you probably discussed this to death at this point, but do you have a favorite mobster or mafia movie of all time? Of all time? No, there's a couple of contenders. Uh, no, I don't have a favorite. Uh, that's, that's fair enough. And it's it's a much kind of, <laughs> it's a very competitive field. So let's put it that way. Yeah. Um, when you have created, I guess, like one of the most talked about endings of all time, was that at all on your mind when it came to creating the ending for this movie? Like, was was there any added pressure, I guess, to end this on a, on a similar kind of uh, open-ended note? No, there was... The only pressure was to have, an, you know, an, an ending that had some impact, that had some emotional impact for the audience watching this story. That was... The only, it's the, it, it, there was nothing particular about this movie. Endings are difficult. Um, maybe not all endings are difficult, but they are difficult. Over over the years, like especially uh, the years following uh, James's passing, so many people have come forward to talk about the influence of the show. Like Vince Gilligan said that if it wasn't for The Sopranos, he probably wouldn't have done Breaking Bad. Uh, Matthew Weiner about the same about Mad Men said he really approached. The writing of that show differently because of uh, because of the Sopranos. Like when you look around at the TV and movie landscape today, do you notice the influence the Sopranos maybe still has? Are you, do you see things and go, oh, that's vaguely reminiscent of or harkening back? I to did for a while. I did for a while, but then people got out of the people got out of the situation of borrowing tropes from the Sopranos or. It, it, it went on for about, I don't know, five years or so. And the stuff now is not like the network stuff. Although I, I got to say, I think it's getting more like network stuff. It's uh, it's different from television in the 90s. But um, maybe people were influenced or said to themselves, OK, I'm going to just go there and like, you know, kick out the jams um, and do what I want to do. And there was more of an appetite on the part of financiers to go along with it. And when it came to, I guess, the casting on this, uh, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but if you came or if you came like to an agent or, you know, any number of actors and says, we're putting together a Sopranos movie, uh, I would imagine that the interest in that from many big actors would be, would be massive because they would want to be a part of something that has such a prestigious background to it. Um, and you went with, not not a lesser known actor necessarily, but Alessandro Navola for the, the kind of center of this story, who I really appreciate as a fantastic character actor. But what was it about, say, him as the actor that you you and everyone else involved in this movie decided he's he's who we need at the middle rather than, say, a bigger name? I, I just remembered him from seeing him in two movies, one of them being American Hustle. And I always thought he was underrated or underused. And I always wanted to <clears throat> correct that or work with him. And um, he's a great, he's a fantastic actor. He's just a really, really good actor. And uh, him being uh, of Italian ancestry didn't hurt. And then on, on the flip side of that, we've got like Ray Liotta, who if you cast him in a gangster movie, people, I guess, I guess like they will automatically make that comparison. Is that a difficult jump would you say for for audiences to make to go but well, that's the goodfellas guy and now he's just do he's just doing another gangster movie i don't know is that what people say about robert de niro oh he's doing another gangster movie i don't think so maybe but i don't think ray has done a lot of gangster movies besides uh casino um no casino uh i don't think he's i don't think he's specialized in that in his career <laughs> Oh no, I don't, I don't. I personally don't think he has either. It's just that it's a matter of like for audiences, maybe that is his biggest role. 
So it's a matter of, I guess, trying to break the audience's mind of him not just being the Goodfellas guy, but actually being an actor capable of portraying another character in another gangster movie. Oh, Goodfellas is a long time ago. I mean, uh, it's too bad people can't retain some valuable information in their brains that long. That's that's fair enough. <laughs> David, thank you so much for your time today. Thank you. As far as your nephew goes. I'm listening. Stay out of his life. <laughs>